these notes are about completing the square. We're going to talk about what it means to complete the square, and then we're going to talk about how we can use that for quadratics. So I have an expression on the screen right now, x squared plus 6x, and then I have a funky picture next to it. I'm hoping to represent the picture, the area of these shapes, um, algebraically. So take a look at what we have. We have an x squared plus 6x. Notice we have a green square in the picture. If we call each side length of the square x, then the area of that green square becomes x times x, or x squared. Now I'd like to break apart the 6x to represent the area of each of the blue rectangles. So you might notice if we call this length 3, don't forget the length of the rec the other side of the rectangle is x coming from being next to that green square. So the area of one of those blue rectangles is length times width or 3 times x. Same thing on the other blue rectangle, it's congruent. This has area 3 times x. How does that relate to this algebraic expression? Well, it's a geometric representation of that algebraic expression. The area of that whole funky shape, square plus 2 rectangles, is x squared plus 3x plus 3x, or x squared plus 6x. What do you think we're going to do next? Well, we'd like to actually complete this square. If you look on the outside of the square, of this sort of shape, we have an x plus 3 length over here and an x plus 3 length over here. It's almost a square, except we have this little notch cut out right over here. What does the area of that little square have to be in order to complete the whole thing? You might have realized that since this dimension is a 3, and this dimension is a 3, then the area of that tiny square must have to be 9 in order to complete the square. So going back to the algebraic representation, if we added a 9 till the end, now x squared plus 6x plus 9 is representing the entire square. And if I wrote that as the product of the two side lengths, which of course is the area of the square, I can write that as x plus 3 times x plus 3. The quantity x plus 3 times x plus 3, or of course just the quantity x plus 3 squared. We started with x squared plus 6x, and we asked ourselves, what did we have to put on the end so we could rewrite it as the product of two things that are the same. We could rewrite it as a perfect square. In other words, what did we have to add to turn our original expression into a perfect square trinomial? And it turned out that was 9. Look back on the picture. Where did the 9 come from? Well, we took the 6x and we had to divide it into 2 to get those two blue rectangles of 3x and 3x. And then we noticed that this length of 3 was squared to get that missing area, 9. So what we did was we took the 6, we divided it by 2, and then we squared it. And that's what completed the square. In general, if you have x squared plus bx, to complete the square, to be able to rewrite it as a perfect squared trinomial, you would take half of b and then square it. Then would we, be, we would be able to rewrite that perfect square trinomial as x plus half of b squared. Notice we had the 6x up here, and we ended up with an x plus 3, the quantity squared. And that's coming directly from this picture that represents what we're doing algebraically. Let's see how fast we can complete the squares here. So x squared plus 6x, we just did that one. We know that completing the square there would give us 9. We already did that one. Take a look at the next one, x squared plus 14x. Let's see, I know we need half of that b value squared. Half of 14 would be 7. 7 squared gives us 49. If I wanted to factor that now, I could call that the quantity x plus 7 squared. 
Notice the third example, x squared minus 12x. Well, that's going to be the same. It's going to follow the same pattern. Half of negative 12 is negative 6. And when we square that, we get a positive 36. So when you're completing the square, you're always adding something at the end because we were squaring half of our b value. So no matter what it was, when you square it, it becomes positive. The difference is now that when we factor it, instead of an x plus 6, it's really an x minus 6, the quantity squared, because of this minus right here. We're going to be doing this a lot in the future, so you might want to start to think about for what types of functions is this easy to do. Think about it. If this number, this b value, if that wasn't even, this would be kind of annoying. If that was an x squared minus 13x, you'd have to take half of 13 and then square it. And then suddenly we're not dealing with integers anymore. It's still doable, it's just a little ugly. So once we get used to seeing how we use this completing the square, you want to not forget that this is not something you want to do every single time, all the time. We have to think about when it's easiest to do. So that's how you complete the square. Why do we care about it? Why do we care about completing the square? Let's use completing the square to write this in vertex form. Right now, this quadratic is in standard form, x squared minus 12x plus 11. If we're going to use completing the square, it turns out we can get this into vertex form. Why might we want to rewrite this in vertex form? Well, it's easier to graph at a vertex form. We can clearly see the vertex. We can clearly see the shift. Sometimes it's easy to solve for certain x values when it's vertex form. And this is kind of a fast way to do it. What we want to do first is focus on the first two terms. We're going to ignore that plus 11 for a second. We're going to complete the square with just the first two terms. We actually already saw this as our last example on the previous page. Half of negative 12 is negative 6 squared is positive 36. We now can't forget about that plus 11. We have to write that there. But notice this is not the same function. We added a 36. That's not okay, unless we undo it by now subtracting a 36. It's one of those neat little math tricks of adding and subtracting the same thing to make it have the structure that we want. So right now, the, the um, expression in red is identical to the expression in blue. We just have this plus 36 minus 36 there. Why did we do that? Well, now we have a perfect square trinomial because we completed the square. We can write this as the quantity x minus 6 squared. Now we just have to simplify this last, these last two terms. 11 minus 36, that would give us negative 25 when we combine those. We did it. That's vertex form. f of x is equal to the quantity x minus 6 squared minus 25. And we can see the vertex is at 6, negative 25. Not so bad. And now we could graph that fairly quickly if we wanted to. So we just looked at the first two terms. We completed the square. But then we had to keep the balance by subtracting whatever it was we added. And then we did some factoring and combining. This one is a little bit trickier because of this guy right here. We only talked about completing the square so far in this video with an a value of 1, x squared plus something times x. What do we do if there's a 2x squared? Well, I'm not sure. So let's make it look like just an x squared. And we can do that by factoring out a 2 in just the first two terms. A look at how I wrote this next line. I left a space and I only factored out the 2 from just the first two terms. If you multiply that 2 back in, you'll get back to the original function. So, so far we haven't changed anything yet. Now, if you look inside the parentheses, we have some nice, uh, a nice expression that we can easily complete the square with, x squared plus 10x. Half of 10 squared gives us 25. So we had to factor that 2 out before we could think about completing the square with the rest of it. And notice it changed that b value. It's now a 10, not a 20. 
but we changed it. We can't just add a 25 without undoing what it was that we added. So should we subtract 25? We have to be careful. That 2 out front is affecting that 25. So we didn't really add a 25. We really added 50. We added 2 times 25, which means we now have to subtract 50. This is why these can get a little bit more complicated. We had to notice what we added inside the parentheses, and then we couldn't forget about that number out front. We have to keep the balance. You can always check to see if you've kept the balance by multiplying everything out and making sure that you got back to your original. 2x squared plus 20x plus 50 minus 15 minus 50 gets us back to that. So you can always check by multiplying out at each step. Well, we're not quite done, but the hard part's over. We can now rewrite this piece as our perfect square, x plus 5, the quantity squared. That 2 is hanging out out front, and we just need to combine negative 15 minus 50. And that gives us negative 65. We did it. This is vertex form. Our vertex is at negative 5, comma, negative 65, and we have an a value of 2. Notice we had to factor that 2 out before we continued on completing the square. So those are two examples of how we would use completing the square to transform our standard form equation into a vertex form equation, which is usually pretty handy. Again, you have to be careful. This is not always super easy. If we factored that out and we had some number in, in there like 11 instead of 10, then it becomes a little trickier. So this is a, not something we want to use 100% of the time, but it's important to realize when it's fast to do this, when it is easy to do it. Because when you can complete the square, you want to, because it doesn't take too long. Good luck!